Simply put, um, ayahuasca is a vine uh, that grows um, in the South America um, and it translates as vine of the soul. Um, ayahuasca is used as a, a, um, a medicine by the indigenous peoples of South America. Ayahuasca is a, um, a tea that is consumed um, predominantly in South America in a ceremony setting and um, it's known as a, a spiritual medicine. It's a reawakening of uh, a new spirituality because churches, the mainstream religions and fundamentalism, it, it's sort of like a kickback against that because it's not a religion, it's a set of practices that go back. Shamanism is our earliest spiritual practice and it dates back at least 40,000 years. So we're, we're looking to these tribes that the tradition hasn't gone in. You know, the tradition has stayed there because they haven't been westernised. So that's why we look to things like the Amazon. To try and bring you into this space uh, so you feel a little bit more comfortable, less anxious, um, I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes. And then I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask everybody in the room to, to close their eyes. Just begin taking some nice deep breaths. You know, there's a whole religion based around ayahuasca. You, you know, the tribes worship this medicine. It's a medicine. Their artwork, their music, their whole way of life is based around this medicine. It's based around a plant, you know. It's, you know, the Amazon rainforest is their church. Ayahuasca is their Jesus Christ. This is a process of just uh, quietness now. So allow your breath to disperse your thoughts, your feelings worries you have. And be aware that as you're breathing out you are releasing. And whatever that means to you, you can be releasing anything. Be releasing uh, pain from your past, the fear of your future. The ayahuasca is a tea or a brew um, from the Amazonian jungle. Uh, consists of two plants, chacuna and capi. Uh, there are other, uh, other ingredients or other um, recipes. Um, yeah, and it's used for uh, medical purposes. Um, but we're sort of working beyond physical, so working in a spiritual way, energetic way, uh, cleaning the body, um, and with that, cleaning the mind. When we're at the peak of our breathing, it's going to be uh, hard work. And the harder we work, the more we benefit from it, the same as all things in life. And the history is actually unknown. There's a lot of different stories around. I mean, how long these medicines have, have um, been in human um, existence is, is really unknown. But from what we understand by speaking to the tribes, it goes way, 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 way back, way back. <sighs> Speed. Stay on this speed, stay on this depth. Do this into my next instructions. Uh, there's, there's many others from all over the world. You've got Iboga from Africa, you've got Peyote in North America. In this country, um, the UK, we have Liberty Cat mushrooms, and it's been speculated that goes back to the Druids, maybe even, you, you know. So in our history, there's, there, there's a history of visionary spiritual plant medicines that go way back in, into human history. Now we need to take a big breath in and hold. Big breath in now and hold. At the end of the breath when you feel like you're full, sip so you feel yourself a little more. So you're absolutely full. And hold. There's many different retreats all over the world now, and uh, a lot of a lot of celebrities are exploring this this avenue. Definitely. 
But we're in the Maloka, the room that the ceremony will be held in. This is my bed. I've got my blanket ready and, and my mesa. And literally, they're just my two forms of comfort blanket. But in all seriousness, I could have whatever I wanted it. That, like, the medicine will do what it's meant to do. Charmaine is uh, a friend now, and we met over a year ago uh, at a different retreat, um, exploring a different medicine together. Um, and yeah, so we're we're at a, a retreat in, in Portugal at the moment, and Charmaine's come along to explore ayahuasca. Um, so I have it uh, under good authority that she's followed her diet and uh, the other recommendations that we've set her. Um, so she's just come to, to drink the medicine. So in a short time, uh, we're gonna sit down and talk a little bit about life, uh, any emotions that she's going through at the moment, any worries, any troubles. Um, and then we will begin the ceremony. I've gone through like a pick and mix of emotions today. The tears started. Um, I questioned my intentions and then something happened which blew another layer of my fake perception of the world apart again. Um, so I'm just ready to do the work, come back into balance and harmony with who I am and what my place is in the world and how I move forward at this, at this moment in time. I'm not in a place like I'm not depressed or anxious. I've not got any serious physical, well, I haven't got any physical illnesses. I've, I've come into the ceremony today really because I need balance again and direction. Every, yeah, every type of, of person. Um, I suppose you, you, would, you would maybe expect uh, you know, drug addicts and, and, and that type of person to be, be sort of seeking this type of experience, but a whole whole spectrum, uh, lawyers, uh, actually even policemen, I know that that, uh, that uh, indulge in this type of work. Um, doctors, nurses, uh, you know, and of course, people that are suffering in various ways, various forms, depression, anxiety, uh, drug addiction, there's a there's a whole cocktail of things that can be addressed in this in this space. I'm apprehensive because the medicine hasn't. I don't have the best of journeys, but things can always change. So I'm excited. I'm in a different space. There's no language barriers in this ceremony. Um, there's no high pitched sounds of the jungle in this ceremony. And start walking forwards in your most perfect place. I want you to start focusing more now on how you feel, and it's absolutely wonderful. Continue breathing as we walk. <clears throat> now this child has many things she would like to say to you. Many stories to tell. And I want you to just listen as the younger version of yourself begins to tell you. I think it's got to be experienced for you to have a, uh, an opinion on it. I've done other medicines and they really did shift and move stuff, but I feel like it's time to come back into relationship with the mother plant and I feel totally safe. If there are tears, then I want you to just comfort the child and hold that hand tight. If there's a smile, I want you to smile with her. So I'll be facilitating the experience taking her through, looking after her, possibly a little bit of energy work with her, but, but generally we like to just sit and, and allow the person to have their experience without being involved in it. But what you do know is the medicine is going to give you what you need and you just have to go in and trust that it might not be easy, but it is for your highest, best interest and good. Every person's got a unique experience, a unique story. I have no idea how it will go. Um, she'll be safe in whatever happens, I know that's certain. We will allow Charmaine to express her feelings and her emotions without getting in her way. Obviously, if there was a moment where uh, your safety was a concern or you're, uh, you, know, you know, in a real bad place, then, then we will be with you. 
and hands on with you if you need. But other than that, enjoy the medicine. Okay, so when you're ready, if you'd like to come forward. <coughs> Trust your intuition, um, and if it's meant to be, you will be guided to the right um, people f for your ceremony. Um, there's a lot of information out there now. I mean, there's centres in Peru, Brazil, all over South America. Um, it's a case of, of, of doing your research online. I, I don't, um, and, and just follow your intuition, go with what feels right. In this country, ayahuasca is illegal um, because it contains DMT. Um, DMT is illegal in this country, um, which is absolutely absurd from my perspective. It's my sovereign right to explore my own consciousness. The thing is, DMT is naturally in the body. I can produce my own natural DMT now. I mean, I'm carrying it now. So are you. We're all carrying DMT. If you get enough oxygen into the into the into the bloodstream, I don't know if you've heard of the Wim Hof method, which is a, an intense breathing exercise. You can have visions on that because you're you're activating the DMT that's naturally in the lungs. So I, the law is stupid, <laughs> to be frank. Basically everything that alters your consciousness apart from sugar, alcohol and caffeine is illegal, which is just absurd. I become aware of ayahuasca after a friend of mine um, posted on my Facebook page um, a video clip of Bruce Parry um, uh, in Peru drinking ayahuasca. And I was going through a lot of personal changes in my life at the time and I just something, I had this calling, I can't explain it. Um, so I did some research. And a few months later, I found myself in Peru, um, a, um, a spiritual retreat in Peru, um, up the river Nane, not far from Iquitos. Um, and I took part in a, uh, numerous ayahuasca ceremonies um, in the middle of the Amazon, uh, just myself um, and two ayahuasca arrows. I was as nervous as hell. <laughs> I was because there's a lot of information out there about the experience. You know, it can make you purge. It's it, it's meant to taste unpleasant, and it does. There's a dietary uh, preparation requirement, um, and also just uh, basic uh, recommendations on on how to live in in, in pre preparation for the the ceremony. Um, so that would be uh, obviously uh, a vegan diet. Um, no dairy, no coffee, there's quite, you know, no drugs, no drinking, so no social media. <laughs> if you can avoid negative relationships, basically I isolate yourself a little bit and, 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 and apply the strict diet, that would be great preparation for this experience. Before going into an ayahuasca ceremony, you're required um, to be as clean as possible. Um, no pork, no alcohol, no drugs. Um, no meat, no fatty foods, no sugars. The cleaner you are, the cleaner your experience. Um, the cleaner you are, the, the you, you, if, if you're cleaner and lighter, the medicine will be able to work and function um, at, a, at a level that, that is beneficial to you.
on the approach to a ceremony, uh, you can't help, I can't help but be unbelievably nervous. Um, this medicine, all plant medicines have an unbelievably, they're, they're very, very tough teachers. Um, they are healing if you're willing to go there. Um, during the process, I actually enjoy it. Sometimes it's very, very difficult. Sometimes the visions are, are too much to take. They take the medicines can take you to really dark places, but if you want to bring light to that darkness, you must face face that darkness. You, you know. recommend uh, protection being put around your spiritual protection if you're not knowing how to do that there's a lot on YouTube um, to do so make sure you always make sure your room is protected and that you open some kind of sacred space in that room so it might be that you say through a few prayers that you might call in your spirit guide your totem animals whatever it is you work with because um, it's really vital that your space is held and that it's a ceremonial thing rather than a recreational thing because this is really sacred medicine, you know. So, yeah, so set the scene, set the space. You can use things like Agua de Florida, which looks like this. That will cleanse and purify your hands, will purify to bring in protection as well. It's very good, we use it in all shamanic work we do. Um, and then, yeah, just about having your space set, isn't it? And doing it in a ceremonial way. So rather than just not doing it with any kind of intentions, yeah, just in, so releasing and inviting in. But just be careful what you wish for. Sometimes what you want to release might not come in the way that you wish it to be. And what you want to invite in might not come in that way. So you make sure your intentions are really clear and precise. And you can put on some music on, um, I know you could go on SoundCloud or YouTube or something, um, look up shamanic music. Recommend Ninwa because he does Kura Medicina and yep. he, does, he, he calls in all the powers of the medicines. We've learned Icaros and songs over the years, so we sometimes sing them in ceremony. Yeah. It's about making it special for you. Yes, yeah, so if you want to listen to whatever music makes you happy because they say by in we should have put music on but it didn't feel right but sometimes in silence the ego takes over and it's loud whereas if you've got music on it helps to calm that down and help you to receive the medicine more fully The visions are undescribed. I don't have the words to explain what the visions are like. They go beyond what we deem regular visions. They, you know, it, it accesses parts of our mind and our head that uh, words just don't. We, I don't have the words that, that they can't be explained. Sometimes the visions are very. They, they can be explained. I've seen animals. Um, I've seen my soul and I don't have the words to explain what I saw when seeing my soul. I, 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 there's nothing that I can compare it to in this reality. Um, it's to be, it's to really, it should, it should be experienced to be understood. Everything can be dangerous. Um, too much exercise can be dangerous, drinking too much water can be dangerous. I've, I've heard people have tough experiences in ceremony. That's a part of the process and we need to be careful here because I have had some extremely testing experiences in ceremony but that was my own personal process. I don't know of anyone that's died from drinking ayahuasca. Um, I, um, I have 
been made aware of press reports that have suggested that. Um, however, I've, I've got reason to believe that some of those press reports weren't acting on accurate information. People do freak out in ceremony, but that's because of the process rather than, you know, I don't know anyone that's taken ayahuasca and then gone jumped off a bridge. If that's what you're, I don't know any stories like that, but the, the, the journey itself can be testing, but that's the process. And I've, you know, and, and I've, we've all heard stories of people taking acid and jumping off bridges or thinking they can fly, you know, but I, I, I don't know any, anyone that's, that's drunk ayahuasca or psilocybin or St. Pedro or peyote or ape or, or whatever and, and done those things. It's allowed me to have a good look at myself, to find out who I am. I'm still finding out who I am. Um, it's improved my relationships to Mother Earth, um, to the elements, to fire, the air, women, um, sacred fire, the sun, the moon, plants as a whole. It's allowed me to um, heal insecurities, depressions, anxieties. Um, it's a difficult question to answer because it's, I'm still going through this, you, you know. Um, it's allowed me to unprogram myself from the false programming that society has placed on me. Before I come into contact with plant medicines, I was um, very much in the head. I was an ego person. I thought I was, I was an ex, you know, I'm an ex-policeman, you know, and, and with that comes a bit of cockiness. You know, I had a mortgage, I had a beautiful girlfriend, you know, holidays every year. You know, I thought I was living, really I was dying, if I'm completely honest with you. I'm, I'm living now, I have nothing, but I'm more alive now than I ever was before discovering plant medicines. Everyone's journey is different. Some people can take ayahuasca once and, and, and they get what they need and they never go back to it since. Um, I think David Icke has only taken it once or twice, but that's all he needed. And look how far out the box he is. You know, I've, I've taken a lot of plant medicine, but that was just my journey. Everyone's journey is different. Everyone, everyone is different. Me, I'm at the stage now where um, I mean, I can't afford to go to Peru now, <laughs> now but um, um, if I could, I would take part in a plant medicine ceremony. But, you know, I'm on the shamanic medicine wheel and I'm at the stage now where I'm moving into a space of holding a ceremonial space for people. You know, I have such a close relationship with the, with the plants that, you know, they've helped me so much. I now want to give back. I have changed as a person. I think, well, I know that ayahuasca hasn't changed me. It's, it's, it's put aside the person that society programmed me to be and it's allowed the true me to come forward. It's not changed me, it's woke me up. It varies. I've been in ceremonies when it's just me. I've been in ceremonies when there's been as many as up to 30 or 40 people. Um, personally, I find that the less people there are, um, it seems to make it more intimate and the work and the healing and the processing seems to go at a deeper level. That's just my personal experience. If, if someone watching this thinks that ayahuasca is a new age fad, then it's not for them. It's as simple as that. It's not for everyone and it generally isn't. It takes courage, it takes strength to go through that experience and and if and if your viewers or any of your viewers have that mindset that it's a new age fad then it's not for them you know it scares me to even think how far the medicine took me yeah you could feel i was feeling when i was in it i was just the medicines like that you'd be all nice and then all of a sudden you'll just drop it's a, yeah. 
I could feel a drop, so I was telling myself, like, right now, it took me. It took me. So I was looking up there, and when I listened to the music now, it's really peaceful. I was in that peaceful place. Mm. Whatever work they was doing on my physical body, I didn't need to be aware of that. And it was like the medicine was holding me, doing use with doing my healing. So the first cut for me, yeah, I had my purge. And it took me in and I was like, woohoo, forgot what this was like. The second cup, whoa. The smiles laying there. And 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 then <clears throat> it was me. It was I didn't know what was happening. It didn't matter. Well it fucking did. Um, and it was pure relief for me after. I wish I could sit there with all these beautiful angelic smiles. But the depth that medicine took me in, that realm is the most frightening. Not because I see dark things, I'm not seeing dark things. It's purely the medicine's vibration working through me. That's the best I can describe it. Like, um, do you think it's taken you into the sort of unknown? Did you get that as, yeah, as well? Yeah, because it's infinite. The pattern <laughs> is infinite. So you got no... You can't... There is... It's infinite. Mm. End of. The first... 100 encounters, <laughs> even, <laughs> were really painful and scary <clears throat> and uh, dark. We're tricked into thinking that we're not free, but we are. <laughs> and coming home from that place, coming home from prison, it's the prison of the mind, coming home from prison is hard. One, as soon as you take that in. <laughs> <laughs> it just slap bangs you in the moment. For me anyway, everyone's different, but there is, it just brings me straight into the... Is it what, what, so it's like it has an instant effect on you? Yeah. Yeah. It's something beyond where it words has happened in this room today, and the process really starts from this point forward. Things happening to you, it just don't matter anymore. So you, you're just relaxed. And even the most intelligent of people could, could give you the words, but without the experience, it's never really going to be understood. I would, I would ask any professional from the scientific world, I don't think like a scientist, but if, you know, I, 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 if there's anyone with a scientific mindset, I'd ask them to go and look at the work done, done by Professor David Nutt regarding DMT, psilocybin, psilocybin, cannabis, and, and you know, he, if a, profes a professional wants a professional point of view, then I I'd ask them to, to go and look at the work by Professor David Nutt. He did a really detailed study on, on, the, on, on drugs and he had, a, he, he, uh, had a, he had sort of 30 or 40 years of data to go on as well and he released a paper to the, to the UK government at the time which was the Labour government. I can't remember if it was Blair or Brown but one of them was in power and it made the press um, because he proved that horse riding was more dangerous than, all the, than the illegal drugs which it is, so I was driving. You, you know, but the study went into such detail. It was a phenomenal piece of work, and um, yeah, yeah, he's really and and I think he's doing trials now on DMT and, and and psilocybin mushrooms. So, you know, a professional, if they want a professional professional perspective, speak to Professor David Nutt. And it was only when I started this journey it, did I see how blind I was to my truth. A prisoner in so many areas, financially. I was living a double life for a while. I was a bad, bad drug addict, like the worst. And, but then on the other side, I had a fancy car, successful business, you know, designer clothes, a suntan, well-groomed, you know, so I looked healthy, I appeared healthy. But the truth of the matter was, I was basically a crack addict. So the story that I told the world 
was uh, to keep me safe. I told everybody, you know, I didn't tell it, I was showing everybody that everything's cool, I've got loads of money and da -da 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 -da, and everything's cool, but the truth of the matter was that most evenings I was on the floor, probably butt naked, dying, can't breathe, probably scarping around looking for a fag butt because I've smoked all my fags and I'm too scared to go and get another pack. It was, uh, but I didn't, I was unaware of how I was working with illusion. I was creating an illusion for the world around me so that they could see uh, the best parts of me, but the best, but what I thought. Um, but the truth was completely, completely beyond that. And uh, when I had my first experiences, it was like the shackles because I was using all of these tools and it's still happening a little bit in certain places, but I'm aware of it. And uh, yeah, so to strip yourself, and it's a process again that happens over time coming back from, because uh, I still love my clothes and I still like cars and I, I still like these things, so it's about, you can still have them, but I'm not using them to tell a story for me. There was a ceremony I was in and I was taken to a place down here and I was in this place of, and there was light and there was this beautiful white box and out this white box come this jewel is the only word I can describe and it was my soul and mother she mother ayahuasca because she, she she speaks to you she said to me she said you know and I said to her what's, what what is that it was the most stunning thing I will ever see it consisted of every color and colors that we don't have in this reality and I can't explain what I was seeing it looked like a, a jewel and and I said to mother ayahuasca what is that and she said that's you that's your soul you are all all of you are that beautiful and it just overwhelmed me. We are all stunning, all of us. We're gorgeous, it's amazing. It really, really is. Is how you integrate these non-linear experiences into a linear world and uh, that's the difficult part. In actual fact, this is the easy part, although it might not look like it. I think that we're in a very unique time in our history where consciousness is expanding, people are waking up, you know, um, Mother Earth, you know, she's our mother and she needs her children. And some of us are listening and some of us ain't. And those that are listening will be guided to research or consider taking ayahuasca. We're, we're just in this very, very unique time in our history where people are waking up to the fact that the reality that's around us is false. The political system that enslaves us is crumbling, things have been exposed. We're just in this really unique time of awakening. And, and I think that is, is why people are becoming more aware of not only ayahuasca, but the, the health benefits of things like cannabis and psilocybin and etc. Because this is, this is basically a, a gateway to yourself. This, that's all. You're only experiencing the realms of yourself. You see the world around you in, in a vastly, vastly different way. And um, you see life. You see life, what life really is.